Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, And today I am recording with Greg Murphy, EVP, I hope that uh, of North America for Instanda. I didn't write it down, so I hope that EVP was the correct title. Uh, Greg, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? Um, it's going fantastic. Thank you, Tony. And yes, EVP of North America is the right title. So. Okay, perfect. And, and, and Instanda is based in, in London, but you are the, the North America leader. Uh, are you here in the US or are you, are you in London yourself also? I am in the US and I work out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. So right in the, oh. in the center of the country, right to, awesome. in the northern awesome. part. Twin cities. Yeah. So we, we are recording on November 16th. So, so uh, I spent 10 years in the Midwest. Uh, in Iowa, so very close to Minnesota. So I can only assume that you're already under like six feet of snow and it's like negative 10 <laughs> degrees for the last month. We Well, we have a couple inches, but yeah, it's it's we know that's where it's headed always. So Okay, okay. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so Greg, we always give the, the guests a chance to, to kind of give the elevator pitch. What is Instanda? I don't know, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, you are pronouncing it correctly. It is Instanda and and interestingly enough, Instanda stands for Instantly Stand-Up Products. And so what Instanda does is we are a full policy administration system and distribution system for insurance products. Many of our clients are, about 80% of our clients are in the PNC world. We also do work in the life and health business. But what we are at our core really is a digital platform to allow insurers, whether they are distribution insurers like MGAs or MGUs or carriers to stand products up very, very quickly, distribute those products through whatever means they would like to, websites, internal websites, broker websites, distribution websites, direct to consumer, uh, mobile websites, and distribute them in any way that they would like to in a very rapid fashion. And then we also act as the system of record or the policy administration platform. Okay. So... This is uh, very interesting. So, so, so as I was telling you before we started recording, I come from from the from the PNC carrier world in the states, uh, but I, I I was an underwriter, I was a claims adjuster, I, I was a sales manager, like, like I was never on the system side. Uh, so, so I'm a little bit foreign to that side. But, but what I have seen, uh, and nowadays I provide staffing to to insurance companies. But, but what I have seen. So to, to stand up an insurance product, product quickly in the PNC world in the States might mean three or four years, right? It, it, like in a good case scenario. So, so in Standa, I, I, it, it stands for instantly stand up products. So that, that's a big claim instantly, right? Mm -hmm. for, for what are we doing in, in, in PNC insurance? So, so how fast can you... So, so let, let's say that 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 I'm uh, I, I like kind of concrete examples. So let, let's say let's say that that I am uh, with uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a carrier that that does only homeowners that doesn't have auto. But I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. So anyway, let's say that I'm I'm, I'm a PNC homeowners carrier and I mm -hmm. want to stand up auto. How quickly can you guys help me get an auto product stood up? Well, most of our deployments take anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks. So it's weeks. very, very quick. I, if, if you had said 12 to 16 months, I would have said that's quick. Yeah. Uh, so how how on earth? Uh, so, 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 so number one, uh, chances are, unless I'm a, I'm a brand new startup, chances are I, I already have a system for my existing products. Mm -hmm. And that system is probably... You know, written in COBOL and not, uh, uh, we're, we're modernizing and we're getting to the point where maybe we're moving it to Guide, Guidewire or Duck Creek. Uh, we've been doing that for the last three or four years or, or longer. And maybe now we are API ready, maybe not. So, so how, does, how, how does your system play with, with our existing systems? Well, I, I think I would answer the question in a couple of different ways. Okay, so for, first of all, uh, we do play very, very well with existing systems because as, as you very accurately stated, if you're a carrier in this business or, or if you're an MGA or MGU, you are 
in many cases, not only do you have one platform, but you probably have more than one. Uh, the last, I, I come from the carrier side that, that as well. The last carrier that I worked for had 32 policy administration systems. Uh, what, what, right? When so, I, uh, I was at a very large carrier, uh, and I, I won't say the name, but, but, but uh, they were, when I left, they were working through integrating over a hundred personal lines uh, platforms into Guidewire when I left, and it's taken 10 years yeah, uh, because course. they had bought other companies and never switched the platforms. Right. So, so, so just to, to, just to finish the thought here. So what I, I said that I would answer the question in a couple of different ways. So the first way is we, we do exist very, very well with existing systems. And I would say that we kind of come alongside those systems and we do a lot of the, what I would say the kind of the front end part of that. So a lot of the, the underwriting journey, the rating, the quoting, uh, binding. And when it comes to the issue part of it, depending on the strategy of the company, we can either hold that new policy and, and actually be the system of record, or we can hand it off to an, to an old an old or legacy system. And it just depends on, on the client's needs. So that, that's one way I would answer the question. Um, the other way is that it's pretty common for us to hear from a carrier, hey, we just spent four years on a, a, a journey with a, a, a you know, platform of choice, right? We just finished a large deployment. Uh, and now we want to put a new product out. We want to put a brand new product. We want to do a cyber product. We want to do a um, an offering that we just don't have today. And I went and sat down with the very exhausted project team that just finished this four year journey. And they said, <laughs> and they said, oh my gosh, one more product. We could maybe get to that within the next year. And, and right? a, a quick parenthesis: the the, the four year project was. A two and a half year, you know, fifty million dollar project that ended up being four years and eighty million. Uh, it's I, I didn't want to say that, but you know that is exhausted, that is reality, sure. yeah. right? They're, they're exhausted, right? Um, but this is but this is reality. I mean, this is a, a lot of the legacy systems that are out there right now, or, or even what I would call kind of the modern legacy systems, um, big logos that are out there. They're they're great systems. You know, I, I oftentimes I call them aircraft carriers. They are. You know, they, they, they do a good job. Um, however, you don't always need an aircraft carrier, right? Sometimes you just need a cruiser and you need to get a product out. Um, it doesn't mean that the insurance product itself is any less sophisticated. The insurance is still complicated. We haven't resolved that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but we are, what we are able to do is because of the way our technology works, we, um, we are able to very, very quickly get that product up and running with whatever rules that you have, whatever underwriting journey you have, whatever rating process that you have, and get it out into the market. Because we not only do the administration, we also do the distribution. And um, the other thing I would point out, Tony, is that, uh, and I like to tell this story, it's actually one of my one of my favorite stories to tell, is that what the reason that we can move so quickly is that if you think about the way current or, or legacy or modern legacy uh, platforms are in the insurance business, the way that they grew up, they started in the back office. Okay, so, so just think of any typical policy administration platform. What it was really designed for originally was to make sure that when that insurance application came in, that all the rules that you needed to apply to that insurance application were applied. And then you need to make sure that you store that policy and you store it appropriately. Right, and all those pages come together and come together in the fashion that they need to come together to put that contract out. That's what they were designed for, is to really automate that back office. And so what's been happening over the last, let's just say five years, is a lot of these legacy providers have been trying to extend those rules out to the front end to really get product out to different markets, right? Whether it's direct to consumer or just different, different um, uh, brokerage environments. And so what, what, what has ended up happening is you kind of take this legacy mindset and you try to extend it out to the front end. It just doesn't work very well, right? The way Instanta works is exactly the opposite. We start on every project with the front end. We start with who is the end customer, whether it's a broker, uh, an agent, a carrier, or a direct-to-consumer. Who is the end user of this particular situation? And let's design that, let's design what that looks like. Then we'll design the underwriting rules and the underwriting questions that you want to be in that experience. 
And from all of that great work that you do in a conference room on a whiteboard, your back office actually gets pulled together and gets designed for you. And then the data model is created, right? So we, we take the, we flip the model that's out there today on its head. And rather than starting in the back office with a data model you're trying to fit into, we start with the end user experience, design it and go backwards into the back office. And that's how we're able to move so quickly. And not only can you move quickly, but but that's also gonna gonna solve the biggest problem we, we have with, with the way that people interact with insurance, which is that that we are product focused when people are looking for for companies that are customer focused, right? Because they become used to mm -hmm. to Amazon and 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 and, uh, and Google and and companies like, like like that being completely customer focused. Uh, and it's so hard for us to act in that way because everything's designed around the product. Right, that, that, that's exactly right. And you know, there, there's, as I stated earlier, I, I don't wanna be flippant and say that we've, we've simplified the insurance business because we haven't. Insurance is still extremely complicated. And, um, and when, you, when you get into the, the weeds on some of the administration of insurance, we don't take it lightly. Um, you know, there's, there's still a lot of, of when you think about an insurance product, there's a lot of details on getting that product approved, right? If, if some of that content is, is through one of the bureaus like ISO or, or NCCI or, or um, um, AAIS, you know, that, that's, that's a whole different ball of wax. I mean, there's a lot of work there that needs to be done prior to being able to actually get it in a system and, and, and get it uh, in front of your customers. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna downplay the fact that it's still complicated, however, um, for those insurance companies that are prepared and are ready with that content, um, it is we can move very, very quickly. And when you compare it to the legacy thought process, it's it's just a night and day experience for our clients. Okay, and and um, what what's the what's the story of the, of the company? How how did it come to be? I was looking at the website. I, I see that you guys went through plug and play, uh, but what how 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 did the idea? common and, and kind of how did it grow from, from idea to, to reality? So the original idea of Instanda came from uh, two executives at Hiscox in London. So our two founders, they, um, they were, were COO and CIO of Hiscox about a decade ago. And they dealt with all of the complexity that I just mentioned. They, they themselves owned multi multi million dollar budgets and huge projects and and um, you know dec or sometimes decade long projects of being able to implement these large platforms and they just got tired of having to over and over again deal with these massive overruns and projects and this massive complexity for in many times areas they just didn't need it right so um, so they got together and said, look, we want to invent something that just takes this concept and simplifies the execution of it. Uh, super smart guys. And they created initially a consulting company to try and help insurance companies figure out how to do this, even within their own platforms. But after doing that about a year or two, they said, look, we just need to create the platform of the future because it doesn't exist. And so that was the birth of Instanda, is really to get that front end process, that customer experience done first. And then we started building into the back end. And, and then of course, my story, I actually worked for a carrier and my role was to find, uh, really to have a strategy for all the platforms that were out there and, and have a strategy by product line. I discovered Instanda through a product search when I was working for a carrier and I, was, I challenged a project team to get a brand new product up in six weeks using Instanda. And we went from the whiteboard to production in six weeks. At a, at a traditional, at a a traditional carrier program. in the US, how big of a carrier? Yes. Um, that carrier is 6 billion, right? Okay, okay. So, 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 a, so a super regional. Super regional is a good way to put it, yes. Okay. So, um, so we, we did our first, product from whiteboard to production in six weeks yeah that, that's, and i had that's never amazing. seen anything like it yeah i had never exactly. seen anything like it <laughs> exactly and that, so, that, within a normal with a traditional carrier that's amazing 
And so after doing a few more of those, then I, um, I was hooked and I had gotten to know the CEO throughout this whole process. And we sat down over dinner one night and he said, how would you like to change the world for uh, insurance in the US? And I said, I am all in. And, um, and I've, I've never looked back since. Perfect. So, so, so it is, so Instanda is, is not one of those early insure techs that were a tech toy looking for an insurance problem, looking for an insurance nail, right? A, a tech uh, hammer looking for an insurance nail. It, it, it came from, from people that, that understood the industry uh, at Hiscox. Yes. Uh, now from the British perspective, but still, uh, and, and, and then uh, you yourself uh, were a client first, a customer first, and, and the, that's a, I love it. I love it. I, there's so many uh, of the uh, first round of insurtechs from five or six years ago that, that unfortunately, were just uh, you know, a tech toy look, looking for, for an insurance problem to solve, and, and, and it's been so hard for them, and so many of them just have not succeeded because of that, because they just don't understand our weird, difficult, slow, heavily regulated industry. Um, so, so that, that's, that's really fantastic. Um, so normally what, what I ask people is, is can, can you share a couple of stories of success here in the States? And you basically already shared one for, from, from your own for, former carrier. Um, sure. Are there any other stories that, that, that are not like carbon copies of that one? Are there any, any interesting stories of, of, of sure. and success that you can share? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll share a couple of them. So the, um, one of them, actually, one of my favorites is that uh, we we worked with a large carrier in the U.S. I'll I'll keep the names generic, so so I don't get into any particular uh, branding uh, branding police issues or anything like that. <laughs> um, but we worked for a very renowned carrier in the U.S. and um, they they wanted to do private flood insurance, and so uh, anyone who's listening to this knows uh, the nuances of private flood insurance and how that yeah. is extremely difficult to, to stick into your typical systems that you have. So, so re real quick. So this particular podcast was ran for about the first three years by Nick Lamparelli, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, went on to, 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 to be a co-founder at Rethought Insurance, which is a, a flood carrier. Uh, so myself and the listeners are very fluent in flood because the host Excellent. for a long time was, was flood first. Uh, so, so anyway, continue. Excellent. Well, that's a good to know because we, we're actually now on our third flood deployment. So, so that's, I'm telling you the story of our first one. So we, we had our, um, we had this customer come to us and say, we, we have a proprietary model that we want to use to um, provide flood insurance. And it's better than the FEMA model. And it was just this very interesting um, rating situation that they had. And it made them extremely competitive in the market. And so so we started working with them. We got that product up and running and it was about four months. So about 16 weeks from the time we started until the time we got it up. Uh, we've been making enhancements to that product now for about a year. So it's, it's in, in general, it's, it's been out there somewhere between a year and a half and a couple of years. And, um, and we have that, that carrier then was acquired. And now um, we are the premier provider of private flood insurance for one of the largest carriers in the country. And again, I won't, I won't um, mention the name, but uh, one of the top five largest carriers in the country. And we do all of their private flood insurance. And it all came from uh, an initial idea to a very, very quick deployment to an acquisition to enhancements to make their customer experience amazing. And that, that's one of my favorite stories because it really shows the power of how quickly you can, you can move with this. Um, I've got another one of my favorite stories because I just think it's really a cool concept. We, we got a call not long ago. This was, it was less than a year ago. We got a call from a home security provider. So not, not insurance people. They were home security system people. And they said, you know, we have this home security company and that uh, is very profitable for us. But we were thinking one day that we actually have all of the information about all these houses that we do security systems on. And we basically have everything an insurance provider would need to set up an insurance 
uh, policy. So what we would like to do is we're going to start our own insurance offering, and it's going to combine a home security system and and uh, home insurance. And so we'd like to use you as the as the technology to do that. So this company uh, has we did just this amazing product. This was not an insurance company; it was a com com complete disruptor. And we are now in production with them after. The, the initial bill was only a few weeks. We've been constantly tweaking it over the last year, but um, it was just amazing. So now they have a product in the market that is, you can go online, you can purchase a home security system and, and along with the price of the home security system comes all of your homeowner's insurance. It's fantastic. So in, 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 in a, in a, in a non-traditional case like that, an, a non-carrier, non-MGA entity, that for whatever reason like this they have a perfect fit where it just makes sense for them to also offer this how do you handle the 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 actuarial the compliance the filings mm -hmm. uh do you bring in a third partner to handle that piece or or, or can you guys help with that piece well it's it it kind of depends on where we try to meet the client where they're at okay sometimes we have clients that come to us and they have that all figured out already um since since really our entire leadership team, we're all insurance nerds too, right? So we, we're all insurance people. So oftentimes, even myself, as even as an executive, I'm on some of the initial calls with some of these prospects. And I will ask them questions right up front to say, hey, have you thought about this? Are you done with that? What are you thinking about for compliance? And if they, if they don't have the answers to those questions, then we actually help them either um, hook them up with partners or hook them up with, um, uh, other maybe in some cases other solutions that will take care of some of these things. I will say that filing is always the is always a question for us, right? Because if if a customer comes to us and is already they already have the whole product filing thing figured out, great. Then there's not much we have to do. If they don't, we might do a little bit of consulting with them and say, wait, why don't you? We'll work a little bit on the technology, but why don't you get that's the long pole in the tent is the is the filing. So get that done. Right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we will we'll put we'll, we'll put the technology on a bit of a slow burn until you get that done, and then when you get to this point, our deployment's only going to take about three months. So when you get to that, you know, T minus three month mark, then we'll start working on the technology. Sometimes that elapsed time for that is a year, right? So they work on the product for nine months, and then we do the the last three months doing the technology. So it kind of depends. Perfect, makes sense. So so basically, if I'm understanding correctly. You can work with traditional carriers and MGAs. You can work with insure tech MGAs or carriers. Uh, yes. And uh, you can work with non-insurance entities that for whatever reason uh, want to play in this space and, and have a good reason to play in this space. Uh, right? Yes. Are, are sitting on, on, on data that, that, that would make a lot of sense to, to go into space. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, and and uh, looking at the website, the website has lots of information and great information. And it looks like, like you can request a demo right from the website. Uh, so that's yes. probably the, the easiest because normally what, 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 what I say is I'll tag you on LinkedIn uh, when it goes live and what's the best way to get a hold of you guys. But, but uh, with the request a button, or you request a demo button on the website and the website is uh, instanda.com uh, and it will recognize that you're in the States uh, this is it for me and, and and then you'll be able to, to look at everything and request a demo from there so so fantastic so uh, thank you very much for, for, for your time today for, for coming on the podcast it's been very interesting I had no idea that that uh, anybody <laughs> had the ability to, to launch an, an insurance product for a third party uh in eight to 12 weeks or 12 to 16 weeks. Uh, that's fantastic. And I, th I think that a lot of the audience will love learning that. Uh, so, so, so yeah, thank you very much. And I, I look forward to see what, what you guys do as you continue growing in the States and uh, love to have you back as, as, as the company evolves and, and you start doing other things in the, in the future. Okay, great, Tony, great to meet you as well. And, um, and if anyone in the audience would like to know more, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to uh, engage with you. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.